In today's tutorial, you'll learn about isometric design and how to design it with Adobe Illustrator's 3D tools. You'll learn how to make colourful and exciting 3D isometric text by transforming 2D text into 3D using a number of various settings. Jump straight into Illustrator and create a new document. The document size I'm using is 1920 by 1080 pixels. And for your reference, these are the four following colour swatches I'm going to be using throughout the tutorial. Select the type tool and type out your desired word. I'm just going to use the word design and I'm using a font called Karen Regular. Right click the word and go to create outlines and then go to object, ungroup to ungroup each character. Open up the 3D and materials panel by going to window, 3D and materials. And I'm just going to dock that on the right side of the screen. Select the first letter, then under the object tab, select inflate. And then we want to use the following settings. So for depth, we want to use 350. Twist, we can leave it as zero. Tape out, we can leave as 100. For the volume, we want to set it to 36. And we want to make sure that the inflate both sides is also checked. For the rotation, we want to use for the X axis, 28 degrees. For the Y axis, we want to use 38. And then for the Z axis, we want to use 15. The perspective, we can leave as zero. And then we want to move over to the materials tab using the default base material. And then we just want to turn the roughness all the way down to zero. And then on the lighting tab, uncheck the standard lighting. Make sure that the color is set to white, which it should be because it's white by default. And then we want to use an intensity of 150%. Rotation, minus 180. For the height, we want to use 90. Softness, 100. We want to make sure that the ambient light is checked. And for the intensity, we want to use 50%. For the shadows, you can just leave that turned off as we'll be manually adding a shadow later. And then you want to select the eyedropper tool which is I on the keyboard. And then we just want to color pick our pink color. To apply all these settings to each one of the other letters, what we can do is select the first letter layer, hold down the Alt key, and then the little circle on the right hand side, we can click and drag up onto the next letter. And then just repeat that process until every letter has the 3D effect applied to it. Then we can manually select each letter and again, using the eyedropper tool, we can just color pick the colors that we want to use for each letter. And then we can also select each letter and start moving them together to form a isometric design. And we can also use various shapes using the same method of holding down the Alt key and then dragging the 3D settings over to create these little shapes. And also on some of the shapes, you could also reduce the depth amount just to make them a little bit smaller. And you can also use shapes with a simple stroke. Once you've finished adding all your different shapes and you've arranged the letters however you, you want to arrange them, drag a selection around everything and then go to Object Group and then just horizontally and vertically centre the artwork within the artboard. For now we can collapse our 3D and materials panel and then we want to select the rectangle tool, click anywhere on the artboard and then type in 1920 by 1080 or whatever the size of your artboard is. Again, horizontally and vertically centre, right click and go to arrange centre back. While the rectangle is still selected, we want to switch the solid fill over to a gradient. And then within the gradient panel, we want to select the freeform gradient tool. Make sure there's a point in each corner. And I'm just going to change the background to some darker shades. Because our artwork doesn't have a shadow due to the way that the shadows work on each character, what we can do is try and manually or imitate a shadow using the freeform gradient tool. So I'm going to create two points 
The first one is going to be in the sort of middle of the text. And I'm going to use a light pink. And then I'm going to create another point and use a darker color underneath. And then if we just move that closer to that point that's in the middle, we can sort of imitate a shadow underneath. Once you've finessed the background and you're happy with everything and you're happy with the overall look, what we need to do now is render out our individual letters and all the individual shapes. Now at the moment everything is contained within a group which we can render the object from within a group but it requires us to double click and go into isolation mode. Within the render settings panel there is a setting which says remember and apply to all but if the objects are within a group for some reason it doesn't render out everything it only renders out one individual shape. So what we can do to fix that is if we select our group and just go to object, ungroup, select our first or one of the characters or one of the shapes, go to the render settings, make sure ray tracing is on, make sure the quality is set to high and then make sure there's a check in remember and apply to all. Then as soon as we click render, Illustrator will render out all the different 3D objects in one go. Once Illustrator has finished rendering out all the objects, you should notice that their appearance has now become a lot more high quality. And all that's left for you to do now is save it as a high resolution JPEG or PNG. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you've learned something new. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below. While you wait for the next video, you might also be interested in one of these tutorials. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.